you're probably watching this video because you want to see how to put a new water pump impeller in your Mercury small two-stroke outboard motor. And this one is supposed to be very easy. So first of all, here's my new water pump impeller. I bought this from Amazon. I have a link down in the description to be able to purchase this. Before you buy the impeller, a lot of times they'll say, double check with your initial impeller. If you're like me, what you probably do is you just go ahead and you order the part and roll the dice and hope you got the right one. And that's what I'm doing today. So what I did was I took my serial number that's located here on this particular motor and I looked that up found some exploded diagrams and it showed me some of the various parts. I looked at the part number, then I matched up the part number to find the Sierra part number, blah, blah, blah. It's a little bit of a dance that you have to do. Also, if you go to your local dealer and you have the year, make, serial number of your motor, they usually can pull the part for you as well. That's the same process they use. Where the water pump impeller is located in one of these is right behind the prop. And the way the prop is held in is with this, uh, I don't know if this is an aluminum or stainless steel cotter pin. I'm not sure. Do they make these out of aluminum? So what we do is we just take out the cotter pin first. Now these small mercury outboards are supposedly made in Japan by Tohatsu. Because it's made in Japan, odds are this is metric and should be a 10 millimeter. And it is. All right, so here's the shaft where our prop is. And what's really nice is, I don't know if you can see in here, but mine is not damaged or scored up. And this is our pin that holds the prop in. So I assume this, yep, I can just slide that out. And the way these props work is see this pin just fits right here into this notch. Pretty simple. What's nice is I don't have any uh, fishing line wrapped around here. Or do I? Oh, ooh, we have something. Yeah, we have something wrapped around here. That doesn't belong. I don't know, that could just be some hair and debris or something. Okay, so word on the street is you take out these two screws, this plate comes off and our impeller is right there. Wouldn't that be nice if it was and it was that easy? Well, this isn't easy. Look at this. I should probably be using a socket, not a wrench. All right, fine. I'll go grab a 10 millimeter socket. Does it break loose with this little screwdriver one? Or do I have to use a wrench? I mean, a, uh, a ratchet. Oh my, yep. So have you ever tackled an impeller job before? If so, put it down in the comments below. That pop sees free. Have you noticed they made a pop sound? There may be some Loctite or some kind of thread sealant on these. See what we got here. These look in good shape. Both the same length. All right, so this isn't perfect, but it doesn't look bad. As you can see, there's some discoloration here, but it doesn't feel scratched up. And then there's some, I guess, corrosion outside of the area here. And here is Mr. Impeller. And supposedly, <laughs> we just can pull him out. Why is it a he? I don't know. All 
All right, so what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing a hold of some of the fins here and trying to give it a little bit of a tug. So we're trying to pull evenly. I don't know if you can see this or not, but it is inching its way forward. So that's good. Also, I like to make note of which way it, 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 it leans. If you notice, so these ones here bend over that way. So if I put it back in and I want to have a little bit of a twist, I usually try to put it in where it's bending the right way. And what I've been told is that if you put it in and have the fins bending the other way, that they'll work, they'll right themselves once it does a revolution with a new impeller, they'll just fix themselves. There we go. So here's our old one. Just came right out. Now there's a pin in here because this has a, I guess maybe like a double keyway is how I'd refer to it. Let me use, uh, <laughs> let me use this as my pointer. If you see, it's got an indent on this side and on this side. And that's because the pin goes through this shaft here and that's what holds this impeller in place. And my new impeller has the same thing. So on first glance, looks like I got the right thing. Let's open this up and take a closer look. I'm laying them on top of each other. The paths look the same. And the fin length looks the same. There may be minor variations. So our new one is very firm. This old one feels pretty floppy. And it actually looks like it's made out of something thinner, doesn't it? But as you can see, it's really not in that bad a shape. What you're looking for with an old impeller is you're looking for a lot of uh, deformities. Because the way they sit in here where they squish towards one side more than another, and that's how they push the water, is if you notice how these ones here look straighter than those ones, but the curve is settling out of these because it's been sitting for a few months with these pressed like that. And so what happens is that the, over time, some of these things can get hardened like that. And so when they come into the wider space, these don't actually rub against the wall in here like they should. So what you're looking for with an old one is if it's cracked up, if there's bits missing, if these have hardened, if they're all like really twisted like that and just staying in that position, that's what you're looking for with an old impeller. So this one here is actually fine. Another thing you wanna check while you're in here is just this space in here. How is this looking? Is it, you know, has it got buildup of crud? Is there any corrosion in here? And this thing looks, it looks great. Looks really good. And here's our, one of our water passages, I assume. And I guess these are, maybe that's where, the, maybe that's the water intake right there. And then this is where it goes out. That's pretty cool, huh? That's such a crude basic system. You see these little notches here? So that's where my water actually comes in the water pump probably is through these spots right here and it goes out there. It's such a small motor that that's all it does. So we make sure we got our little pin centered and uh, I'll leave my phone here doing its flashlight thing for a minute. And we got our new impeller. There doesn't appear to be a front and a back. Both sides appear exactly the same. I just have to make sure I got this pin sitting in the middle there. And what do you think? A little bit of lubrication on here just to make it easier. I like to use a little bit of dish soap to lubricate these things. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. And 
So that fits on there really nice. And I just gotta make sure I am lined up exactly right with that pin. And as you see, as we press against this, you see where these impeller blades go to fight against the, this side over here. And just try to keep everybody going in the direction that we want them to go in. Now, some people use zip ties and things like that to try to hold these blades where they want them when they're pressing the impeller in. Since the old one came out pretty easily, I'm hoping the new one will kind of go in easily. Probably not going in right now because we're not lined up. There we go. Look at that. See how that popped right on in? That was fantastic. So let me move my light around here a little bit. So as you can see on this side here, these impeller blades are very bent where they're pushing tighter and here they're looser. And that's the way these things are designed. The one side, this is so it scoops up a lot of water and pushes it around up into that chamber there. All right, so here's this surface here. I'll just take my remaining bit of dish soap and lubricate that. And then this just goes right back on. Tighten these up. And then we know that our pin goes through here. This is our pin that holds our prop in. It wants to give a little bit of resistance, so let's put a little bit of Dawn dish soap on that as well, all right, shall we? I'll use the goopy bits of Dawn dish soap from around the, around the nozzle. It doesn't have to be Dawn dish soap. All right, there we go. See that now moves around. We want that centered. This lines up with that. And then I guess the pin just, looks like the pin can go in from either direction. Should I put a new cotter pin in? Yes, I should. Am I putting a new cotter pin in right now? No, I'm not. I don't have one handy right here, but it's a good, good practice to always replace the cotter pin whenever you're doing something like this, instead of doing what I'm doing, which is trying to bend the old one back to be straight to fit through the hole. That's not the way to do it. And let's see. If we do this right, when this pin is all the way through, prop should stay in place, and it does. So. 